Welcome to another issue of Tam Hanna on Random Electronic Things. Today we are going to talk about the Erza Icon Nano soldering station. Well, first things first, when you start out with electronics, eventually you feel like soldering. And usually you then head to some hardware store and you buy a cheap soldering iron. My practical experience tells me, don't do it. In the end, you'll want something better. And in many cases, you will end up with some Ursa kit. And I'm going to show you my Icon Nano now, which I bought some years, I think about one year ago, for like 200 euros. And well, some things I like and some things I don't. Our Ursa Icon Nano essentially consists of two parts. First of all, we're going to look at the mother unit. This is basically this thing here and it has the cable for the power which is less than a meter long and as you see here in the back it's affixed and it's quite a bit difficult to take out and in addition to that here in the front we've got the connection to the actual soldering gun and the soldering base station which is included and here in the back there's the power switch which I'm going to show you in cooperation with the screen when we're powering on the unit. And this here in the front is a sticker which is reminding me and any employee who happens to waddle by that you always need to have a wet sponge when soldering. This is the second part of the Nano. It's basically a stand with the iTool soldering gun with the heating element which is a bit problematic, we're going to talk about it in a minute. And here you have a stand for up to four of the tips and some dry steel wool for cleaning the tip. And with that, we've reached the point of biggest criticism, aka what I really hate about Ursa. You see here, when mounting on the eye tool, you've got a three-part solution. You've got the tip, You've got some weird metal part, which fits into an equally weird plastic part. And all of this, then this slides in here, and at the bottom, you screw it down here. And sadly, this becomes a problem, because when you are in action, you want to change the tip, and you go and you bang it like this, bam, 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 because this connection is very tight. And in this case, eventually, this little plastic piece will break because if you buy the station, you get one of these and one of these. But if you buy an extra tip, the mounting bracket is not included, which it should be. Just for the sake of completeness, here's another shot of the whole assembly. And the thing is, this little part is not available separately, but only in combination with the back part. And this assembly costs between 5 and 10 euros, depending on where you buy it. I've got the part number inside, and I've also got some distributors which sell it. And no, they are not affiliate links. Sadly, this construction tends to work out quite badly in practice. Because as you bang it on the back, eventually this thing will break and it will compress. I know that you are dying to find out more about how to fix the problem, but I need your help. Please, please, reward me for having to stretch all the way over from my chair. Subscribe, like, comment. Thank you. And if this happens to you, the first step is you take a big screwdriver and you push the damaged part onto it and you turn it around a little bit until it looks somewhat smooth. And then you need to check whether it fits through or whether it doesn't fit through the plastic. If it doesn't fit, the next step is you take a round tongue and you do this. The, I the exact way how you work it depends on your situation, but I took a round and a flat tongue and I just turned around and pressed, pressed, pressed until it got smooth enough again. Now that the bickering is out of the way, it's time to power up the station. The switch is in the back, and you see, the moment you switch it on, it basically starts up. And you see here, 
the temperature it wants to reach, and you see, woohoo, up we go, real fast. The interesting thing is this, that setting up the correct temperature can be a bit difficult with the buttons, but in practice you usually get there. The main nuisance is the power on and off switch in the back, and of course that this display doesn't have a backlight. With that, it's time for one last interesting aspect. Ursa is based in the EU, so they are subject to all kinds of security regulations. And this directly affects you in one place. Here, inside of this thing, there's an accelerometer. And if you don't move the iron for a few minutes, it automatically goes into a low temperature mode of about 100 degrees. And it wakes up if you shake it. So, if your iron ever goes to sleep, just give it a good shake. And, just for completeness reasons, once again the power switch, which I'm now setting to off, to power off the unit. Now, let's get to the hard point. Would I buy the Icon Nano again or not? Well, I probably would, even though I'm not particularly happy about the way they gouge me with those stupid parts, it's just a question of Ursa being a brand which I know. And I've been using Ursa for years and I know Ursa. Well, if I'd be visiting, for example, my friend Keith in the USA and I'd use his parts station for some time, then probably I would give another brand a chance because I don't like being ripped off. But from an electronics and workmanship point of view, there is no need to complain whatsoever about the Iconano and I can recommend it wholeheartedly.